FNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You have Mark, our, our market starting things off in negative territory, jumping into the S&Ps. We're negative by 21 points right now, trading at 42.46. Things looked a little bit more dire overnight. We actually reached a low of about 42.18. So you're talking about almost 30 points below where we're at right now. You have the S&Ps down almost 50 points on the session. That that actually not as harsh as what's going on in Europe and definitely not as harsh as what's going on in Asia right now. We'll get into all of it. You get the Hang Sang folks down 5.13%. No, excuse me. Yes. No, excuse me. I'll do that again. You have the Hang Sang down 3.7%. You have Shanghai down 5.13%. The Nikkei right now down 1.9%. We'll go over to Europe since we are. The DAX down about 9 tenths percent. FTSE down about 1.6% right now. CAC roll down 1.4%. Our markets, not as bad when you look at it, right? So you have the S&Ps down less than half a percent right now. It's going to be an interesting open. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar territory, down about 4 tenths percent right now. You have the Dow off about 4 tenths percent right now. And the Russell off two-thirds percent, almost seven-tenths percent in the red. We jump over to commodities. A little bit of a scare of a slowdown in China, going to put a hurt in commodities, and you got crude under 97 bucks. We're trading 96.90. Volatility in crude, man. Watch out on this thing. Uh, we'll put it back on a daily real quick. Just to see the volatility, the lower portion, you're talking about right near that area, maybe $94 and change, maybe call it $95, matches up to the bottom of the bodies of those candles. And you're talking about an area that we have not traded below. Pretty remarkable when you're talking about almost two months, folks. February 28th, we break above that area decisively. We've pulled back a couple times. You have crude inching towards that area right now at $97. Gold pulling back as well, pretty harshly, under $1,900. bucks. my dad has got a new update out for the gold report today if you're thinking about getting into that gold report uh encourage you to check it out we got some volatility in gold right now 1896 negative 38 dollars that's almost two full percent in the gold contract silver down 62 pennies at 23.64 and we jumped to notes and bonds we're getting a little bit of a reprieve not for the great reasons that you'd hope for though in terms of a reprieve only because of an economic slowdown may be possible you have risk off selling off on equities you have notes and bonds higher you got the 10-year positive by 25 ticks right now we got yields 2.82 percent just remarkable moves uh, in the tenure. You're talking about a point and a half from where we were trading at early on Friday, let alone just basically back to where we were at early on Wednesday, uh, not quite back to the highs we had early last week. But look at where we were last Monday when we started things off. We had a 120 handle. We're almost back to a 120 handle. Meanwhile, we almost made it to a 117 handle. Late Thursday night, the 10-year, positive by 24 ticks, 30-year, positive by a point and 12 ticks. Let's jump over to the VIX as we round things out. Man, it's been quite a couple days, man. I'm going to pull up the S&Ps. So much for a 19 handle. That is Thursday morning on the VIX, folks. We're floating with a 30 handle right now on the VIX, and probably rightfully so, because even in the devastation that we've had in this market, I'm not sure that we've had two days like we had simultaneously between Thursday and Friday. From 4509, you trade down almost 200 points from where we were last night. You ended last week at a price point of about 42.45. So you're talking about, what does that put things in terms of the pullback? 165 points to the from where we were early Thursday. And you take a look at the daily, folks. As I said, I mean, yes, there were four or five straight bars that were pretty dramatic in late January, we'll call it, January 18th. We also had a bar really January 13th. Sell-off began January 6th, but two bars of this magnitude together, that doesn't exist on this chart yet, folks. Scary proposition. Uh, really remarkable that the market pricing that in, at least to some degree with Chairman Powell, was the talk last week, right? Saying uh, 
he's comfortable with 50 basis points in May, forget what the exact verbiage was, should not have been a surprise to the market. Nonetheless, the market waking up to the idea the Fed is going to hike, they're going to hike with some force, and they believe the market can handle it. And the market says, well, maybe we can't handle it at 4,500. We can handle it about 4,250 right now. We'll see where we go on the open. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines we got, and we'll start it off with the China lockdown amping up inflation scares for global markets. Folks, they're going to have some supply chain problems. Supply chain problems are going to translate into less goods. Less goods are going to translate into higher prices. That is what happens, and unfortunately, what's going on in China right now, they got a big problem. They're locking down Beijing, a city of more than 20 million people, adding to worries about supply, stresses, that are keeping the heat on prices. European stocks fell the most since April 6th. We talked about Europe right now. As I said, you got the DAX down uh, 8 tenths percent, FTSE's down 1.5. But over in China, man, watch out. They are uh, hitting those markets in a big way with, as I said, Shanghai down more than 5%, Hang Seng down 3.7%, Nikkei down 1.9% right now. And yeah, it is a big problem, folks. Uh, China had a zero COVID policy, did not work at all. They do not have a vaccine that is as effective as we do, and it's all coming back to roost right now as they are locking down the city, man. And uh, that is going to put a hurt on the whole world when you think about the number of goods that come out of China, um, adding to the woes that we're dealing with already right now. Okay, what else we got going on? Uh, Twitter. So I saw the headlines this morning, man. They may have a deal as recently as this morning. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. But Twitter catching a bid. You're up about a couple bucks. Now, let's pull this off real quick. The one interesting thing here is we pop to that 618. We'll see if we pull back. It doesn't look like it. The headlines, folks, are saying that the board and Elon, they might work out a deal as of today. You were down to 31 bucks. You're at 48.93. Right now, you check out the 15 minute on that news, and there's a spike for you up to 51.25 right now. I believe it was 54 and change. Was his bid offer correct? Yeah, 54 and change, something like that, because it spiked to right near that area on the first reports on April 5th that he was going to buy the company for that price, or at least attempt to. Uh, there is still some premium left open, folks, on this. So deal not done quite yet is what the market may be saying, uh, but a deal very possible. And let's pull up the headlines as we look at it. So Twitter jumps on reports it could accept Musk's bid as early as today. The board met Sunday to discuss the financing plan for the proposed bid. The board negotiated with Musk into the early hours of Monday, according to the New York Times out there. 54.20 was the price. And as I said, it's only trading at 51 and change right now. Uh, if you think it's going to happen at 54.20, there's some volatility in there that you could absorb. But boy, if it doesn't happen, you could see that sell off in dramatic fashion. And as we all know, anything is possible with Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, and that's all really we got up here. Yeah, it's it's un it's unclear what the deal could look like. Report Reuters reported Monday that the agreement could still fall apart. Uh, Twitter's not been able to secure a go shop agreement yet, which would allow it to look for other bids once it signed the agreement. The company could still accept another bid if Musk pays a breakup fee. There's a lot out there. Nonetheless, we may get some news on Twitter. Twitter, what are the uh, highlights today? Trading higher at about 51.29. We'll jump over to. Uh, Musk's other endeavors, and maybe that's a little bit of a sell-off with the market there, to 961. You get a little bit of a pop down to 981 right now. Tesla barely read by about $20. S&P is negative by 15. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 17 points right now. Checking back a 15-minute chart. We're trading right now at 42.49. Back to a daily on the S&Ps. Man, we got quite a pullback, and it seems like 4,200, well within reach. You talk about the recent lows. Uh, spike low on February 24th. You're talking about 4,101, folks. That's still 150 points from where we're trading at right now. You talk about the area that we chopped around in in early March. You peg that on a chart. You're talking about 4,150. You're talking about 100 points from where we're trading at right now. Quite the move over the last two days, but we'll see where it goes because today with what's going on in Asia right now, what's going on with Europe, very difficult to see the U.S. markets charging higher as you have Shanghai. Uh, excuse me. Um, is it Shanghai? I mean, the, the city that's... Yes, Shanghai. I almost said, no, 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 Shanghai in my head. It's difficult. Um, one of the larger cities locked down over the weekend, warning the virus has been spreading undetected for about a week. As we all know, folks, that means it's everywhere. All right? <clears throat> the one thing, one of the first things um, that thinking back to, because it's important to learn from your mistakes, right? I think there were a lot of us that made a mistake in not realizing how quickly things could escalate with something we had never seen before in the likes of a pandemic, okay? The first time that there was a case in the U.S. that they could not trace, the, the switch should have been flipped in your head that, no matter what the politicians were saying at the time, President Trump, okay, that if it was a case that was untraced and was spreading, that basically that was the fear that it gets out, it gets out, and, and then it spreads unchecked. Uh, that's what's been going on in Shanghai for over a week, folks. They're going to have to lock down everything. In China, it's basically like they lock it down and there's no getting out. And that is going to put a hurt on things dramatically when you think about the hurt that's already going on in terms of the backup with, with Chinese ports. Uh, getting into some of the numbers, as I talked about, you talk about no matter what market you choose over there, you are down in dramatic fashion right now. Uh, the Hang Seng fell 3.57%, okay? Uh, yeah, they got different equities in particular are down about 5%. The Nikkei was off 1.9%. In South Korea, the Cosby slid 1.76%. Uh, they also get down to, in terms of just... Yeah, the Shenzhen component, okay, down more than 6%. Shanghai Composite down 5.13 I talked about. Uh, no surprise, and it makes all sorts of logis 
it makes all sorts of logical sense that the market should be concerned about the COVID situation because that clearly is impacting economic, uh, economic activity. It's impacting earnings potential from many parts of the market. Uh, that is Chief Asia Pacific Equity Strategist at Goldman Sachs, Timothy Mo. Not familiar? Nonetheless, he's making a lot of sense, folks. Uh, they are just locking down cities of 20 plus million people. Uh, Let's see, what is, what is the population of New York City for some context? Yeah, New York City population in 2022 is 8.85 million folks. So that's two and a half New York cities locked down. That gives you an idea, is that right? What am I looking at here? Yeah, I believe that's right, about 8.85. Maybe when you include the boroughs, it pushes it up to, no, there it is, yeah. We're talking about New York City of 8.1 million people, folks. Um, yeah, the state of Florida. So this is this is a good analogy, all right? Because I've looked this up recently. The state of Florida has as many people. There, there's a good comparison to bring it into reality. The state of Florida has as many people as Shanghai, folks. 21 million people. That's what they just locked down. If you lock down the city the size of Florida, you better believe there's going to be an impact out there. Um, and you're seeing it in the markets today. That's remarkable when you think about it on that comparison. Okay, let's jump around to what else we got going on. Coca-Cola out with their numbers today. Uh, we're drinking a lot of soda, folks. We're drinking a lot of whatever they're selling. Coca-Cola trades up to 66.30. Let me get back to where I got everything pulled up here. <clears throat> and how about revenue jumping 16%? I mean, last year, a different time than this year, to say the least. Unit case volume rising 8% during the quarter, fueled by demand for drinks like Powerade and Coke Zero Sugar. Here's what I'll say, folks. Uh, Powerade, probably a more healthy beverage choice than Coke Zero Sugar. Diet beverages, yes, you can make the argument that they do not have sugar, which is more helpful. But in general, folks, diet soda, not good for you. Uh, kind of tricks your body into wanting that type of a, almost like a drug in your brain. Uh, and it can cause you to actually have those cravings even more so. Despite the suspension of its Russian business, reiterated a full-year outlook for organic revenue and comp earnings growth share uh, per share growth, 64 cents versus 58, and a decent revenue beat in a big way, 10.5 billion versus 9.83 billion. First quarter net income attributed to the shareholders, 2.78 billion or the 64 cents a share. So $2.78 billion in the first quarter. Not a bad haul when you think about it. Not a bad haul on the revenue they're doing. That is some serious margins, man. Revenue of 10.5 billion uh, and they're bringing 2.78 billion. Not a bad business plan to be selling sugar water uh, at an expensive toll. Excluding items, 64 cents a share, 58 was the number. Net sales rising 16%, man. That's just a huge beat. Organic revenue, that's going to strip out the impact of acquisitions, climbed 18% in the quarter. Pricing and mix grew 7% in the quarter, helped by strategies like bottling its drinks in smaller packaging. Watch out for that one, man. As inflation puts pressure on the profit margins, shoppers' wallets, company said it's been expanding its lineup of single serving offerings at affordable prices. Folks, please don't be wasting your money on single servings of sugar water or diet sugar water. Uh, even in the case of Powerade, many times that cannot be something that is help healthy if it's got a lot of calories in there and you're trying to minimize you know, minimize some of those calories. A lot of these beverages, not very healthy. In early March, they paused the operations in Russia. Said Monday, the de decision is expected to dent unit case volume by 1% and revenue and operating income by 1% to 2%. The decision will weaken its comparable earnings by $0.04 cents a share. Nonetheless, big earnings for Coke, man, and they are trading higher. Jump to some cars. GM, it will produce electric Chevy Corvette. Now, here's what I'll say is, it says it's going to produce an electric Chevy Corvette, and I'll say, well, of course they are, but when are they going to do it? All of these are a question, folks, of when and not if. Yes, I imagine some car companies, maybe they'll try and you know, maintain some car that they say it's got to be gas for the nostalgic, the, the raw power of something, you know, the, the sound of that gas engine. But in general, folks, they're all going to be electric at some point, okay? Uh, GM will produce... An electrified Corvette next year, followed by an all-electric version of the iconic. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit of an extension as this news was just out. See, let's see. You have the GM president 
said the automaker will continue to produce traditional models with internal combustion engines alongside the electrified model. It's declined to disclose when an all-electric Corvette would be released or whether the electrified model would be a traditional hybrid or a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So electrified just means it's going to be some version of a hybrid. All electric, of course, is all electric. Uh, we'll have an electrified Corvette next year. It's coming very quick. <clears throat> Rumors of an electric Corvette have been swirling for years. And yeah, Corvette. That is quite a vehicle in terms of American nostalgia. Uh, they get a little bit of a pop on that, which is surprising. GM putting this thing back on a daily as we come into the break. When we come back for the open, you talk about a pullback, man, from 67 bucks down to 40. There's your three year weekly. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you're back to almost where you were trading, folks. We're going to go back even further than that. We'll take a look at some of these car companies. Look at this five-year weekly. Just right back to you where you were chopping around in 2019 for GM. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. S&P is negative 22 coming into the opening bell. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We jump back to the S&P. You got markets open right now, and the market's a little bit lower than we were coming into the start of the program right now. You got the S&P's negative by 28 points. NASDAQ 100 negative by 72 points right now. Dow off 172 right now. We jump over to commodities. Crude 
uh, $5.80 right now. You get the gold contract down $35.1899 in that gold contract. Bitcoin right now, negative $700, the price of Bitcoin. Uh, I'm going to pull up a chart real quick. I was talking about this in the Tigers Den. Let me see if I still have it. Yes, I do. So this is from Friday. Uh, I'll pull it up again. But just for some awareness, folks, of what's going on, this is a chart going back 90 days on an hourly, okay? And what this is is that you have uh, the QQQ in purple, and this is a chart of Bitcoin, okay? So Bitcoin is the regular bars you're seeing here, green and red. And in purple is its correlation to the NASDAQ 100. If you are trading Bitcoin, okay, now some of the other cryptos uh, may be like this as well, Ethereum, some of the other larger cryptos especially, okay? You're trading the Qs, folks, if you're trading Bitcoin. Now, yes, it's not exactly, okay? But look at this chart, and sometimes you exaggerate things to the bottom, below, sometimes you exaggerate to the top, as in you get oversold, overbought, uh, versus the comparison. But folks, even the tiniest of dips or accelerations in Bitcoin, very correlated to the NASDAQ 100. Now, that's a great thing for Bitcoin in the long run, man, because that means it's not going to zero if it's correlated to an index like the NASDAQ 100. But it also means it's not going to 10 million if it's correlated as well. Something to consider. Not a lot of people, I think, realize the correlation going on with something like Bitcoin right now, even compared to an index like the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Bitcoin today, a little bit lower, 38,690. You're off 2% right now, and we get the markets dropping on the open. You're down 9 tenths percent on the S&Ps. NASDAQ only down half a percent. So that's where you see a little bit of a separation in the correlation between the NASDAQ 100 and Bitcoin. We'll see if it holds, but that's an extended period of time, 90 days. And not a lot of people, I think, like I said, aware of how correlated Bitcoin Bitcoin has become to some of those growth stocks in particular. All right, speaking of growth stocks, let's jump over to ARK. They've been in the press uh, for volatility reasons, you could say, man. And you're coming right back down to these lows we had, folks. You're talking about the lows of March 15th. That's where the market really caught a bid, remember, and accelerated higher. Uh, you are the low there, 51.85 for ARK. You're back down to 52.60. You were just above 70 on this thing. Now, Kathy Wood, She's got a five-year horizon, and that is one thing I actually agree with, folks. If you're a longer-term investor, all right, you want to take at least a five-year horizon in things. Because if you're a longer-term investor, it is very difficult for a year or two to play out on a longer-term investment basis, right? She is looking for big trend shifts in the companies she's investing in. Uh, she's been dramatically wrong for a year and a half now, at least. I mean, she's 160, folks. This thing was at, you're at 52 right now. You're actually still below where you were at coming into COVID. Uh, you started the year of 2019 off at 49.52, and you're trading at 52.26. Let's jump around to some of those stocks. Tesla shares down 2.4% this morning. Um, I mean, she's got some of the ones that got hurt the most, man. Zoom, under 100 bucks this morning, trading at 99.13 from 588. Yeah, just a remarkable deceleration for Zoom shares. Let's jump over to Twitter, see how they're trading on the open. Up 3.3% right now. Now, you have to factor in that the S&Ps are down about a percent. Twitter trading low with the market right now. We'll see if they have any news in terms of a deal potentially being reached, reached between Mr. Musk and the board. I imagine that's a difficult one, folks. I imagine he's playing a little bit of hardball. Uh, he is a grand promoter of himself, and he probably doesn't want to give them any room to shop around, to do any of that stuff. He even included the term, what, last and final offer when he put in that bid, saying, no, no, there's no negotiation. This is the price I'm going to do it at. It's fair. If it doesn't happen, uh, we're going to go aggressively hostile even more so. So we'll see how it plays out. But that's a tough negotiation, especially when you got so much in flux right now. But the market's selling off, man, in in pretty dramatic fashion right now. You got the S&Ps. I mean, just since I was on the air, folks, putting it on a one-minute chart, started the program off, and we were trading at about 42.52. And since then, we've lost about 25 S&P points. The run really began about 9.20, and these are one-minute bars. We've dropped off about 17 points since the open right now on the S&Ps. Okay, let's jump around to see what else we have going on. Some of the headlines I got pulled up. Some of the stocks making waves this morning. We talked about Coca-Cola beating. We talked about Twitter. Oil stocks, they are lower, folks, when you got crude trading lower. Kellogg gets a downgrade, yeah. Deutsche Bank downgraded them. They're dealing with some worker strikes. They got rising inflation, supply chain disruptions, some of the reason they're talking about. 
Verizon, they fall after Goldman downgraded the stock to neutral. Verizon is situated well for 5G growth, but offers a lower potential return compared to peers like AT&T. Now, Verizon, uh, I've talked about it many times when mom worked for Verizon for a while, retired from them. Uh, able to retire at a very young age compared to most because of the union that works for that company, folks. Um, so keep that in mind. Verizon down 2.3% right now on a drop, and they had quite a drop on Friday, man. Uh, they were out with their numbers, and they actually lost subscribers on that. So not what the market was thinking. This thing has had quite a beat this year, as in it's overperformed the market. You came into 2021 at about 52 bucks. You were as high as 55 and uh, just like that, we're back to 50 bucks. You're right down to the lows we had, whether it was in January, also right down to the lows we had in March. You're talking about lows late last year of 49.69 on Verizon shares. We're down 2.3% so far. You take a look at AT&T. Now, this has been a struggle as well, man. I mean, I was looking at a long-term chart of AT&T recently, man. I mean, you're back to where you were in 2009. You're back to where you were in 2002. You're back to where you were in 1998. That's a tough one. Uh, you compare that to Verizon, not the same, as in quite a rise over that period of time. But that's not what you want to see on Verizon, folks. I mean, I know that those are not parallel lines. Maybe it's a little bit of triangle formation. But even if you just take the trend line all the way from the lows of 2010, you match up on those lows that we make over the years, that's a pretty decisive break. And you could make the case, okay, that maybe that line's a little bit lower. Maybe you come back up and test that line, you trade lower. So keep that one on your plan, um, radar as well. All right, market catching a little bit of a bid. Look at this NASDAQ 100. Are we going to go green on the NASDAQ 100 when you got China just getting pummeled today? Well, we might, folks. You got the NASDAQ 100 down just 12 points. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're pushing the market. Amazon shares actually in the green already by a tenth of a percent. Remarkable. You're well below 3000 bucks. You're below 2900 on Amazon. Microsoft shares down Barely in the red by 11 pennies right now. We jump to the big dog, Apple, down 1% right now at 160.13 for Apple. Facebook shares up a percent at 186 right now for Facebook shares. Let's jump to Netflix. Uh, down about one-tenth percent. This is a tough one for Netflix, man. I talked about it last week. The tough part about valuing, valuing Netflix right now, folks, is that they are changing their entire business model. And that's why you saw Ackman with Pershing Square Capital get out of that trade because he said, listen, we need to be able to analyze the future prospects of a company. And when Netflix comes out and says, we're completely changing our business model, we're going to start doing selling advertising, we're going to start selling cheaper subscription plans that are advertising supported. I mean, people in the then were saying half the reason I talked about it myself, half the reason they said, really, the only reason I watch Netflix is no commercials. They introduced us to binge watching, right? Releasing episodes all at once. They introduced us to no commercials. They're changing that all. So who says this company should be worth $100 billion? Because that's pretty much what you're worth right now. You're probably just under that number right now. $96 billion is what Netflix is worth. Um, are they going to have to start spending money on live sports? It's a tough one. And just like that, we just got the NASDAQ 100 sneak into the green. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's negative by 29 points right now. It's going to be an interesting day, folks. Man, anytime you got China trading down like you do, you have China again, folks. All right, if you're just tuning into the program, they lock out, they lock down Shanghai, a city of more than 20 million people. Sometimes you hear that type of thing over in China. So recently, so often recently, I should say, um, locking down cities that are so large, it's tough to relate to the fact that. A city like Shanghai, folks, is the size population-wise of a state, the state of Florida, okay? So cram all the people in the state of Florida into one city, all right? New York City is about 8 million and change. Cram them all into one city and lock it down, folks, okay? That is substantial, to put it lightly. You have the markets over there down two, three, four, five, six percent, depending on what you're looking at. Uh, let's jump over to some of the stocks in particular. You have Alibaba, down 2.7 percent. Not as bad as some of the equities. JD.com, actually positive by seven tenths percent. I've talked about Alibaba recently. I would still be wary of this thing, man. You put it on a three-year weekly from the highs of 319 made in October of 2020. You are well within a downtrend channel, folks. And let's just extend the line on the bottom portion of that to the right. You make it to the bottom part of that. You're talking about 60 bucks, folks. You're talking about $25 below where you're trading at right now. A substantial hit, very possible. Uh, it's looked like these things could be a buy for a while, folks. And this one could play out for a substantial period of time because China is in trouble, man, in terms of zero COVID policy backfiring in pretty dramatic fashion. And there's no way that you're going to see the executives over there, the dictators over there, um, backtrack in any way. They're, they're on a path and uh, they're going to ride it through. And the world is going to pay for that disruption, folks. And you're seeing it play out with the price of crude this morning, down $5.36 at 96.71. There's your daily for crude. You spike from $66 and change. Remarkable. Back in December to 130. Uh, and again, talked about early in the program. You're coming right back down to the lows that we've seen a couple times. You're talking about lowest prices we've seen basically within a couple bucks of that level over the last two months. February 28th is when you really got the pop over there in crude. All right, let's jump around to some of the other equities that are moving. Uh, yeah, so Penn National. This is an interesting one. Gambling stocks, right? Let's jump over to Penn. Now, Penn is the company that owns Barstool Sports, okay? Quite a meteoric rise in their share price during COVID. You're right back to pre-COVID levels of $38. 
You spiked to $3 when the world didn't know if, I guess, anything would exist you gamble on anymore. Uh, they also own a bunch of horse tracks, I believe. So they were really in a max pain situation as those could not operate. You trade from $3 and change to one forty two. We're back to thirty seven ninety four. You are up 3.8% today on that news on an upgrade. And yeah, now you are talking about a company right now that is valued at $6.3 billion. And yeah. You know, the scary thing about this is, and I have a small portion of DraftKings in a retirement portfolio, folks, only at these lower levels did I start to dabble, thankfully. Um, but, I mean, the, the pain has not stopped here. It's, it's been lower prices. We were just trading at $20 this month, $21. Just like that, you lose a third of your investment from where you were April 4th, folks. Uh, if you're riding these, now DraftKings... We just talked about Penn, $6.6 .6 billion. DraftKings, just under $6 billion, okay? The two companies combined for only $12 billion of market cap, <clears throat> which you could say is undervalued with where gambling is going to go in this country, but the thing you have to consider, uh, Kevin Hinks has been talking about a lot on his program, Fast Market at Noon, is the amount of money that they need to spend as that industry is rapidly growing because you're going to see state by state those legalities open up in terms of legalized sports betting in each of those states. It'll probably be somewhat of a slow rolling process. Each time it happens, you're going to have to be spending money in those states to secure new customers. But with that said, there is a substantial future for gambling, folks. The whole landscape of sports has changed. All right. Over in England, you watch a sporting game and they have like the, the just like we're traders, they have the bid ask up there for a whole in live sports betting going on, right? Let's say you got the Patriots playing the Bucks. The whole time, let's say the Patriots are up by seven points. Well, the bid ask will be probably putting the Patriots as a 60% favorite, right? So you're paying 60 bucks to win 100. You're paying 40 bucks if you want to bet the Bucks when they're losing. There is in live betting the entire portion of the game. It's going to change sports as we know it because gambling is going to come into it. You have college sports now being changed forever with the name image likeness that is there. College athletes getting paid, I think that is long past due, okay, that they get paid. Uh, you have basically college football existing as uh, a league in itself to feed the NFL. Not very fair with the amount of money they make, the colleges, the coaches, etc. Finally, those students getting paid for the business they are creating and the value they're creating. But again, it's changing everything. Sports gambling is here to stay forever. Uh, and these are two of the biggest companies that will benefit. So keep them on your radar, radar because you know, you're know you only talking about companies valued at $6 billion. And at some point, uh, the market will assign some future value to the earnings that they will probably be able to recoup. Uh, <clears throat> they're both going to be players in the industry, I imagine. Penn getting the upgrade today, but DraftKings flat in a negative market. All right, jumping down the line, what else we got going on? Yeah, this one's interesting. So CNN Plus gets shuttered after a week of its launch. <clears throat> I mean, you could say kudos to them for, for realizing what's going bad and just bailing. Uh, CNN Plus shuts down April 30th, just one month after launch. And I've talked about this in terms of streaming, okay? Now this is, is it Warner? Yeah, there's Warner Brothers Discovery down 1.5% right now. We take a look at this thing. I think they just spun off, right? Yeah, this is a daily. No. So how's yeah? See, this gets it gets weird because you got the Bill Huang saga that sent this thing up to seventy eight bucks. You combine with Discovery, they're at twenty dollars and twenty six cents. Uh, so I talked about in my program um, the. And I got to get the name of this company that owns Coco Melon, the private company run by Kevin Mayer, who used to run Meyer, who used to run Disney's direct to consumer business. Uh, there's there's two avenues here. You're either big enough to go for everybody like Netflix, Apple, Disney, maybe Amazon Prime, or you need a niche. You need a niche that you can get people like that company in particular Um has chosen with children's programming. There's not a big enough niche, folks, for people to pay a separate payment for cable news. I mean, there really shouldn't be. If you're that engrossed in cable news, I encourage you to go outside and take a walk or do something, man, because, you know, we have a constant cycle of news and it's usually not healthy for your mindset, okay? 
it is very healthy to be informed. It is not very healthy to just watch constant cable news because, folks, there's not 24 hours of news out there. It's just regurgitated news um, most of the time now with analysis added to, you know, cater to whatever demographic you have. Yeah, Blippi out there, Louie, exactly. Um, and CNN just makes no sense. I watch CNN sometimes, you know? I don't have hatred for CNN like some people do out there. I'm never signing up for CNN to pay for it, though, folks, okay? You really, um, anyway, they can it. Um, that probably wasn't gonna play out, and it doesn't play out in a week, but nonetheless, you're seeing it play out on the stock, down 1.5%. Stay tuned, folks, we had a couple other extras to go over. Right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the S&Ps down nine tenths percent in the red right now. NASDAQ leading the way as in only red by two tenths percent in the NASDAQ. You got the Dow off three quarters percent at thirty three thousand four sixty seven. The Russell off one point one percent right now. Russell just bumping up against the lows we've had recently. You got a, a low back in February of 1883 in the Russell. You're trading at 1916 right now. We jump to commodities. Crude. <clears throat> Holding at about 97 bucks for most of the program. You're trading at 97.16 in the gold contract. Holding pretty much right at about 1900 for the program. You're trading at 1899. Here's what I'll say about gold. You're right back to where we were March 29th. You're right back to where we were March 16th. That is the exact 618 of the run we had, folks, starting on February 3rd at a price level of 1787. You make it up to 2078. The 618 on that gold chart, I mean, 
you could begin to dabble, folks. If you did, at least you got a nice area that you could set your stop in. You go below that area, it's probably nothing stopping this from getting back down to at least about 1850 in the gold contract, if not coming down to the lows we saw uh, early this year at about 1788. Yeah, and with that, we got another little sell off with the S&Ps down 1.1% right now. Those are three dramatic bars to the downside, folks. 4219 right now in the S&Ps. It's not stopping uh, when you got Shanghai getting locked down. As I said, it's going to be a wild day. Get those fingers ready for some fast action, folks, because we're only 25 minutes into the start of the trading day, and uh, volatility is going to persist today, to say the least. We jump over to the VIX. You're looking at a VIX. <laughs> There's quite a rise, man. 30.15 on the VIX from 19 and change as recently as last Thursday. That's right, Duffy. we got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up, and as he loves to say, the day is young, my friends. The day is very young for this type of action, especially when we're dealing with what we're dealing with over in Asia, folks. You can't overstate how structurally important it is for China to exist and be open, especially when we have inflation raging. And that's what the market's really freaked out about, man. You're locking down cities the size of Florida over there. Nothing's going to be getting out or getting done. Uh, and we're going to be dealing with the woes of that as we come into inflationary pressure and we come into the Fed hiking uh, in pretty dramatic fashion. Yeah, I was talking about Coco Melon, right? And Blippi. So it's Moonbug. How do I forget that one? Moonbug. But yeah, I mean, you can see the business plan, folks. I've never even been over here. This is the Moonbug store. You can drop it. Blippi, Coco Melon, Apparel. They got all this stuff, right? Brilliant idea. This company. They are you know, the best of as far as I know. Um, very bad to see them. Plus, that's something to see them. Uh, thanks so much for starting your Monday with me, folks. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Larry at 11. Fast Market at 12. Have a great Monday, everybody. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems